how do pro bird photographers get their in-flight shots? Good morning and welcome to an episode of Camilla and I. I'm Mark Cooper and today I thought we'd do birds in flight but at a professional level. Yeah so birds in flight one of the most difficult things bird photographers do and uh, first of all we have to run through the gear required for the professional approach and of course here on Camilla and I we're lucky enough to have the brand new Sony A1 and this indeed is a prerequisite for all top line bird photographers you have to go with the latest gear because you need that fastest autofocus system to get in on that bird nice and early anyway lucky here we've got the Sony A1 and also today we've got the 600 millimeter f4 on the lens and this is all mounted on a gimbal head which again is absolutely essential for pro level. The gimbal head is also sitting on a heavy pair of legs for very good support and very good stability, most important. And last but not least, a bit of comfort. We could be sitting here for hours, so we are sitting in a comfortable chair with a little bit of foam padded seat as well. Ooh, nice. So yeah, that's the gear. So the next thing we have set is of course our camera settings and uh, on Camilla and I we're always on autofocus continuous even for perch birds so AFC mode back button focus absolutely essential for this level of photography I know professionals who do operate still on the single button release but it's most important here on Camilla and I to be able to separate the shutter release from the focus. So it must be auto focus, back button focus. Set to zone for in flight with the Sony system. I think it's group on Nikon and manual. We're always on manual. And we start with our manual mode already preset in the camera. So we know precisely where we stand. Any action first thing in the morning we're onto it like a flash because we've already set one two thousandth of a second f4 wide open we could have very poor light usually first thing in the morning so normally we're right open at f4 but for birds in flight this can quickly change to f8 just by one finger at the front of the dial to f8 if those wings are spread wide we might need to get the whole of the bird in focus so we could go right up to uh, f8 but we always start at f4 and likewise one two thousandth of a second this could drop to one five hundredth of a second for say an owl in flight or it could go up to three thousand two hundred for a really fast bird and maybe even higher for something like a swift or a swallow. So we always pre-focus on something in the scene. For example, in this scene at the moment, I'd be focusing on probably that stick just over. Oh, can you see it? I'll zoom in on it later. I'd pre-focus on that stick. And indeed, if we were working within certain parameters, I would limit on the barrel of the lens I would limit the focus limiter to the specific range we were dealing with we could go from 15 meters to infinity for example now but of course something might come in close 
so we're leaving it on full parameter at the moment and that again just quickens that focus even more to use that particular dial and when we're on the subject of mounted on the gimbal you must switch off the stabilization on the lens and indeed the shutter speed is never a given if I was panning for example if I saw some kind of geese taking off and I wanted to create a bit of motion blur then I would drop my shutter speed to something as low as 120, 1 125th of a second or lower to get that motion and get that dramatic artistic effect. So why are we mounted on a gimbal head today? A uh, very good question. We could be sat here for hours waiting for something to turn up. We can't constantly have that camera in action, ready to go. This system enables us to get in quick and pro support. A gimbal mounted and set correctly can pan and twist and turn in any direction, making it perfect for in-flight shots. And that's why we use a gimbal head. It's the pro tip. 90% of the shots are on some sort of support, even if it's just a beanbag. You can still obtain perfectly good shots these days with the pro in-body stabilization. And in this case, we would set on the lens barrel number three, action mode and we would hand hold perfectly well for short periods of time and indeed this is what we've done very successfully so far with the Sony A1 linked to a few examples of uh, handheld shots but do remember of course to switch on the lens stabilization because your subject will be moving around with your erratic movements now to get a bird in focus with a 600mm lens in flight is not easy and it does take years of practice so you build up to this sort of level and it is a high degree skill set level but mostly it's about predetermination. Once you've been studying a subject or been in a position long enough you realise the little telltale signs that are going to say oh that bird's going to take off oh I can see that bird circling it's going to land and these are the little tells which get you in on that subject a little honk a little noise that's do, do, do. honk 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 I'm going to take off and it's those little subtle reactions that you've got to be tuned into and it's getting into focus as early as possible on the bird so if you see it coming in the distance you track it coming towards you. The other thing I do, which again is not standard, I do not hide underneath here. And the reason I do not hide underneath here is because just like the bird, I need full vision. It's no good. This must limit my vision by ooh, 100%. So I tend to keep it draped around the camera and then once I've acquired the flight shot and the bird lands or something like that, then I go under the cover. Otherwise, you won't even see the bird coming. You won't even hear it. So use the camouflage sparingly because also it interferes with the controls and your action. So uh, point to note another pro so I got to a nature reserve last week and um, there was nothing around well nothing around of course there's always something around and on this occasion it was black-headed gulls and great I was able to get having been a little bit out of practice recently I was able to get right into a flock of black-headed gulls very common subject but brilliant for birds in flight so take a look at some of these pictures that I took last week. Birds in flight and birds taking off. It's not just birds in flight. As I say, it's that anticipation of action. That's what gets you the results. And it's this continual practice, 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 practice that makes you the better bird photographer and enables you to get in with a 600 millimeter. Otherwise, start with a 300 millimeter and work up to a 600 
if you're not at a pro level. When you are hand holding, don't forget your stance. Brace yourself off. Position comfortable, relaxed shoulder position and follow the bird round smoothly as you can. Even though you've got your image stabilization on, it's all about how still you can keep your head. It's just like in my old days of playing football. You actually focused and kept your head steady and then at the last minute you threw your head at the ball. <laughs> Madness. Anyway, that was for football but it's similar in wildlife photography to keep that camera still and in focus. Absolutely key. Yeah, try not to beat yourself up because you can't always get in on the subject. But I missed one this week in the Woodford Valley. I was very disappointed. I had a red kite in my sights and indeed it's got a nice bit of nesting material I think. Either that or it's a pair of stockings. But it uh, looks like a bit of nesting material. And um, I was tracking this bird so carefully I shut my left eye. And this was a killer mistake because in flew another bird and met it just for a brief second. Must have been a third of a second meeting. Anyway, I missed the second bird coming into the sharp frame because I had my left eye shut. It's always a good idea with bird in-flight photography at an advanced level to keep both eyes open. And indeed, this is a key to getting in on the subject originally because you've got that eye-hand coordination. So I'm like a robot. I've got one eye set at 600 millimeters and I've got the left eye set at 50 millimeters. And this is something you just learn where to place the big lens. So position wise, I always try and keep the camera as low and as near to the subject as possible. And wind direction plays a part, particularly on a lake such as this one. So you have to bear in mind, birds take off into the wind. So it's a very good idea to position yourself either sideways on to the wind direction or you want, you want the wind behind your back and then as the birds take off, they come into you. Absolutely superb. So always take note of direction. But obviously this is dependent where you are. You can't always be in the right place at the right time. But you can judge wind direction. And indeed you can follow the weather forecast and see which way the wind's blowing for your photography that day. Well, cheers Morton. I needed a quick coffee break. Cool. Hard work, at least 200 yards from the car today to hunk, to haul all this equipment to bring you along with me. Oh yeah, so don't forget, as usual, it takes time and effort to make these. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Cheers, guys. Yeah, it helps grow the channel, the algorithm or something. Never understand it totally, but um, anyway, we're getting there. Um, what was it? 730 subscribers at my last count. Unless I lost it. Oh, cool. Sugar. Looking heron landing. Oh, I right. Pre visualization. Cool. What a subject. Has Mark been on the magic mushrooms? Well, no. It's not something for hippies alone. Um, it does actually help if you actually have an idea of the shot in mind, even in flight. For example, taking those red kite uh, images the other day in the Woodford Valley, I actually went with an image in mind. I actually went for an outstretched full wing shot. Well, I mean, it's sheer luck that I did have a red kite fly over me with its wings fully open. And uh, yeah, linked to shot, um, quite nice. But it was the thought I had gone out with that intention of actually getting a full spread wings. I didn't expect to see it putting on a pair of tights but um, or carrying a pair of tights but it all adds to the mix. If you can pre-visualize yourself in that position, if you can imagine yourself scoring that goal, if you can imagine yourself getting that photo, getting that one image that takes your 
photography to the next level. Ooh, lovely. And uh, yeah, I, I did get quite a good image. I'm totally happy with that. But now we do have the Sony A1 50 megapixels. So uh, it wasn't quite a full frame, but it must have been half a frame. So there's at least 25 megapixels bang underneath this red kite. Awesome pre-visualization. Wait for the bird eye autofocus activation to come in now and this uh, really improves your chances of getting a winning shot. Anything beyond bird eye autofocus unless it's interaction between a number of birds is probably not worth keeping. So uh, it's my new tactic with the Sony A1 that I keep bird eye autofocus on all the time and I really wait until that system activates before I take the shot. Saves an awful lot of checking later on of shots that are too far. With birds in flight I'm also always set on ISO, auto ISO and there's a reason for this particularly in this sort of setting because we go from lighter coloured water to the darker trees in the mid-ground and then we go to the light areas of the sky. Well my ISO can go from 100 to 1600 in no time at all. There's no time for me to adjust the ISO at all. So that's why professionals tend to use auto ISO. You don't always use auto ISO. There are occasions when you can set the ISO, but on the whole we use auto ISO. Well there's a couple of Canada geese over here and um, they're showing absolutely no sign of taking off whatsoever. So no in-flight shots available whatsoever. But if they were to take off, this is how I'd approach it. I'd hear a little honk, 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 honk. So that would tell me there's a good chance they're going to take off. So I would keep my eye pressed to the button. I would press in on the autofocus button. And then as they take off, I would track the birds in flight as they take off using a panning motion. Even though I've got a fast enough shutter speed to freeze the motion of the bird at one two thousandth of a second, I still want to move with the bird because obviously the bird's moving anyway. But I don't want to go dunk, 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 dunk. I want a nice smooth panning action with the camera as they do. In flight shots with smaller birds like swifts, swallows, really fast birds, we have a really fast shutter speed one three thousand two hundred of a second, one four thousand of a second, something along those lines. And we're trying to freeze those in flight. Of course, another pro tip is to get in early, stay out late. Of course, the best activity, the birds are moving around, often first thing in the morning. They've just woken up themselves. They do a bit of preening, etc. They may have a little fly around, so it's a very good idea to get in early and uh, be up when they wake up, which of course is sunrise, and it's starting to get painful in the summer months. That clock ooh, going going back was all right, but uh, before long we'll be waking up at four o'clock in the morning to get some of the shots that we get on Camilla and I. So uh, yeah, bird in flight shots again low sun in the sky ideally. Well, I've actually got a couple of Canada geese threatening to take off here. Um, always Canada geese at Lanford Lakes. Beautiful. Anyway then, motoring into flight path position. So I'm confident they're going to take off. Plus they're being chased by a swan for some reason. So uh, yeah, it looks fun. Swan's looking a bit bright. So we're f4, one two thousandth of a second, we're going to freeze this action. Yeah, that's unusual, a swan chasing a Canada geese. Normally they chase off fellow swans, but um, yeah, this is quite amazing. Bit of interaction. Oh, I nearly got something then. A swan stretching its muscle. Eye autofocus just cut in then, so we're nearly at the limit of eye autofocus. 
So another pro tip is to uh, watch the uh, compensation dial. Um, if you have a dark bird against a bright sky, you need to brighten the image. You must put that exposure compensation up. Can be as much as plus two for say buzzard, red kite in the sky, but uh, it depends on the particular backlight. I mean today for example it's very dull so we'd probably be just about you know, I don't know, plus one, plus one and a half. It depends on your subject and likewise if you've got a white bird in the sky you may want to darken it down if your sky is a bit dark you may want to put a bit of negative compensation in there because otherwise the wings can be too bright so you have to gauge it according to your subject just the same as a static subject and of course you have to do all this in a blink of an eye so that's why you stay glued to the back of the camera and you get to know your camera inside out so you can alter the aperture and the shutter speed and the compensation dial all while holding the camera to your eye and looking out the other eye at the same time <laughs> Never said it was easy. Well, that's about it from here. I must admit, I shall uh, go back into the studio now. Oh, wishing I'd put the long johns on now. It's still uh, a bit early yet in the year. Ooh. Anyway, link to uh, studio now to uh, continue birds in flight. And we'll go through a few examples in the studio of what I've taken with the Sony A1 in the last six weeks. And we've done a lot of birds in flight Birds in flight is a very good way of taking photos because you isolate the subject and you limit the background. Ideally you don't always want blue sky but sometimes you can't do anything else. But it's a very good way of isolating your subject and this is why we do a lot of birds in flight. Well, continuing with birds in flight in the studio, we had a uh, amazing encounter on the way home from Lanford Lakes. So it always pays to uh, hang around a bit and uh, go to uh, repeat areas you've been before. Anyway, in the Woodford Valley, we noticed this uh, from the car. I noticed this buzzard uh, just sitting on a post, linked to a uh, buzzard just sitting on a post. And I was able to uh, stealthily pull the car up and park and this enabled me to not scare off the buzzard very remarkably and um, I got this sequence of shots as it left the post and this is where anticipation comes in again a key ingredient for advanced bird in flight shots it's the anticipation of knowing where the bird's going to fly and the ability to capture it in camp. Another area I didn't touch on at Lanford Lakes was bad weather photography. Again, this is far more difficult to obtain bird in flight shots in poor weather, but linked to this Canada goose shot in flight taken in the rain at Lanford Lakes, this is when the hides were open. But you can see it creates a totally different atmosphere for an in flight shot, so it's well worth getting out in the bad weather. Again, an advanced technique for birds in flight. So hopefully I've gone through the advanced settings and the advanced techniques we use for bird in flight shots on Camilla and I. Hopefully this has been of some use. Don't forget as usual to like, comment and uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel still growing here on Camilla and I. So birds in flight, a difficult technique, a difficult subject and uh, hopefully you've gained something from this today on Camilla and I. Um, this is the advanced, more professional way we approach birds in flight. Obviously the, uh, there are numerous ways, so uh, please let me know in the comments below of uh, your different techniques and indeed if I've uh, left anything out of birds in flight, obviously uh, it's a key area of wildlife photography on Camilla and I and we practice it all the time and you can't get enough practice. Anyway, have a good one. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye from 
Camilla and I.